Hello, and welcome to the Legacy Education ICD-10-CM Guideline Review Series. I am Tiffany Roach, the Coding Coach, and I will be walking through the ICD-10-CM Guidelines with you. This video will cover the conventions for ICD-10-CM. This presentation is designed to review the ICD-10-CM Guidelines that are effective for both fiscal year 2024 and 2025. There were no new changes to the guidelines from the fiscal year 2024 to 2025. Section 1 of the ICD-10-CM guidelines covers the conventions for ICD-10-CM. The ICD-10-CM consists of the alphabetic index and the tabular index. The alphabetic index is a list of terms and their codes while the tabular list is divided into chapters based on the body system or condition. The alphabetic index is made up of the index of diseases and injuries, the index of external causes of injuries, the table of neoplasms, and the table of drugs and chemicals. ICD-10-CM codes can range in length from 3 to 7 characters and always begins with a letter. A category is made up of three characters, such as E10 or I11. When you have a three-character category that cannot be further subdivided, it is equivalent to a code. Subdivisions of your categories can be either four or five characters, which are also referred to as subcategories. Your final subdivision is what is referred to as a code. If a code has an applicable seventh character, it will be considered invalid if it is not expanded fully to that seventh character. It is important to note that only codes are permissible to be reported for a condition. If it is not expanded to the final character, it will be considered an invalid code. ICD-10-CM uses a placeholder notated by the character X. The placeholder will allow for future expansion if needed. When a seventh character is required and your subcategory does not have six characters, the X must be used in order for you to place your seventh character in the seventh position. Your applicable seven characters can be found at either the code level or the category level. If they are found at the category level, they will be required for all codes within that category. You will notice two abbreviations used throughout the ICD-10-CM manual. When NEC is noted, it means not elsewhere classified, and it is the equivalent to an other specified code. This type of note will be used when the provider's documentation is more specific than the code set. When NOS is noted, it means not otherwise specified, and it is equivalent to an unspecified code. This type of code should only be used when the provider's documentation does not give enough detail to choose a more specific code. Brackets will be found in both the alphabetic and the tabular list. When they are found in the alphabetic index, they will identify manifestation codes, and those codes should always be coded in that specified order. When they are located in the tabular list, you will see synonyms, alternative wordings, and even explanatory phrases. Parentheses are also found in, the, in both the alphabetic index and the tabular list. In both instances, they will enclose supplementary words or non-essential modifiers. These words may not be present within the documentation. However, that will not affect the code to which it is assigned. A colon is used in the tabular list after an incomplete term, and it will need one or more of the modifiers following the colon to make it an assignable category. The next guideline that we are going to discuss might sound familiar. When you have a code that is titled other or unspecified, it will be used when the documentation provides more detail other than what is in your code set. These codes are equivalent to a code with the abbreviation NEC. Unspecified codes should be used when the documentation is not specific enough to assign a more detailed code, and these codes will be equivalent to the abbreviation NOS. Includes notes will indicate examples of conditions that will be found within the category. These will be found directly under a three-character code, also known as your category. Some ICD-10-CM codes have a list of terms or conditions that could be included within that code. These lists are not all-inclusive, and they may not include every condition that will be included within that code. This next topic can be confusing, but don't let that be intimidating. 
Within the tabular list, you will see two types of excludes notes. Excludes one will indicate the conditions that cannot be coded together because they cannot simply exist at the same time. For example, you cannot have a congenital form of a condition at the same time as an acquired form of the exact same condition. Let's use absence of a limb as an example. If you are born without a foot, this is known as a congenital form because it was not present at birth. You cannot have an acquired absence of the same foot later in life if it never existed. Therefore, the code for an acquired absence of the foot will have an excludes note one note with the congenital absence of the foot listed underneath. Excludes two indicates that the condition that is listed is not part of the condition that is represented by the code. Both conditions can be present at the same time. However, you will need an additional code to accurately report both conditions. Sometimes a condition can have an underlying cause or a reason for its existence. When it, that is the case, the ICD-10-CM convention requires that the underlying condition be sequenced first, followed by the manifestation code. When necessary, there will be a use additional code note at the etiology code or the underlying cause code, and then also a code first note at that manifestation code. The presence of these instructional notes will indicate the appropriate sequencing order of the codes. Sometimes the manifestation code will include in diseases classified elsewhere, which will indicate that a manifestation code is needed. These codes should never be assigned as a first listed code, and they must be used in conjunction with an etiology or an underlying condition code. When etiology and manifestation codes are found in the alphabetic index, they are listed together with the etiology code first, followed by the manifestation code in brackets. It is very important to remember that they should always be coded in this sequence. An example is going to be dementia with Parkinson's. In the alphabetic index, G20 is listed first, followed by either F02.80 or F02.81 in brackets. When the word and is found, it should be interpreted to mean and or or. Subcategory A81.0 is titled tuberculosis of bones and joints. This subcategory can be used when you have either tuberculosis of bones, tuberculosis of joints, or it could be both tuberculosis of both bones, bones and joints. When the word with is found, it should be interpreted to mean associated with or due to. It can be found in either the alphabetic index directly under the main term or the sub-main term of the tabular index. When this term is present, you can presume a causal relationship between the two conditions, meaning that they can be coded as related conditions even in the absence of provider documentation linking them. The only exceptions are when there is documentation that clearly states that the conditions are unrelated or when there is another guideline that exists that specifically requires a documented linkage between the two conditions. When the term C is in the alphabetic index, it indicates that another term should be referenced instead of the main term that it is listed with. When the phrase C also is found in the alphabetic index, it means that there's another term that may be useful to reference if that main term does not provide the appropriate code. In the tabular index, when a code also note is present, it instructs that two codes may be necessary to completely describe a condition, However, this does not provide sequencing direction, and your sequencing will depend on the circumstances of the encounter. Default codes are listed next to a main term within the alphabetic index. This default code will represent a condition that is most commonly associated with that listed main term, and it will typically be the unspecified code for that condition. The last thing to discuss for the conventions for ICD-10-CM is code assignment based on the provider's diagnostic statement that a condition exists. The provider's statement that the patient has a particular condition will be sufficient to assign the code. If there is conflicting documentation that is found within the medical record, it will be necessary to query the provider for clarification. 
As always, thank you for supporting us and make sure to stay tuned for our videos in our ICD-10-CM guideline review series. Make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you can be in the know of our newest videos that are released.